In this little episode, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between integer and floating point numbers or formats. The main idea between both is, of course, to store color values when we talk about image quality or image storage. The tonal values of each pixel should be stored in the best way. So I start here with the integer to make the first point clear. The main two formats for integer in our image world are exactly the 8-bit per channel and the 16-bit per channel. Some might argue with me here, but the truth is that is maybe the most used format here, especially for JPEGs. And we see torrents of pictures on the internet about this or with this format. So what does it mean here finally? Integer numbers are just numbers like 1, 2 and 3, for example. And it can go on and on nearly to infinity. Nearly. <laughs> infinity negative 1 would be the correct description, of course. And floating point numbers are pretty much in the same way. Only that we have here 1.002, for example, or 2.003 or 3.75. And this goes also to infinite, but maybe infinite minus infinite or something like that. What I want to express here is, of course, something different. And the first idea to create a format like 8-bit was given based on the limitation that we had in storage decades ago. It was not just to say this is the best format for all times. It is the best format for the times when it was developed. And we have with 8-bit 256 different steps per channel in our file when we use them as integer and if we use them as we have agreed to because there is no real logic in it, why values from 0 to 255 equals black and white. This is an agreement. And now you will ask why 255 when I take 8-bit, then it's 2 to the power of 8, which equals 256. Where is that 1? Because in the old days, any little bit or any little digit in the computer area was expensive. So the zero was, of course, used here for the first step inside of these 256 gray steps that we have per channel. And gray steps is, of course, an agreement. So when we have here from 0 to 255, we have 256 steps because normally we start counting from 1. So this is exactly the same way here. What we can do with it is, of course, then a huge number of colors, because we have this per channel. That means 255 or 256 times 256 times 256, when we talk about red, green and blue, which equals a lot of colors. And most of the time, if we use them wisely for the delivery product, that might be fine. As long as we work on our files, we should try to avoid, on all costs, this format here. Because when we have, for example, a value between 2 and 3 here, for example, then it has to decide. Is it rounded up to the ceiling? Then we have to put it into the 3. Is it rounded down? Then we have to put it into the 2. If we have that exact value here in floating point, then we start here maybe with 2.01 and we end with 3.00 to make it easy with only two digits after the point. But then we can have that value that is here maybe not available between these two guys. That is maybe 2. 55, for example, 2.55, and it stays there. Whatever we do, it has its own space. It is not forced to decide if it wants to be on 2.0 or on 3.0. It can stay there, and when I have a small little edit to it, maybe plus 
0.01 then it moves only a tiny little bit to the side to have the 6 here finally in it and it has its place as before but its own new place with the 0 0.01 in it okay so this gives much more precision in floating point but again the floating point eats a lot of storage when we use this so we need a good system to create it finally with integer it's pretty simple we have 8 or 16 bit for tv we use maybe 10 or 12 bit so there's a wide variety of options and again this is an agreement that we use here the zero for black and the 255 for white in Cineon, for example, it is completely different and I will explain that in a later tutorial because the syncing in all of these data is very important to create finally with HDI and with the linear light workflow the best results possible and not to get fooled maybe by the precision of 16-bit or something like that in integer. What I certainly want to do is that we know that this problem here to have to decide in which place we go is a big problem because when we save the file after one operation and then we call it back into the application do a different operation on that it always has to decide is it 2 or 3 or is it maybe 16 or 17 or 24 or 25 always it's a full step and after a while things get sorted out and maybe get clustered on one little guy or on two or three and then we get bandings problems things like that okay so how is floating point working finally with this without creating millions and millions of numbers with it i want to show you that here just with a new slate <laughs> In floating point we have an agreement that we have normally no white point mapped to a number. White as we understand it from the integer which is 255 for the 8-bit one it's just 1.0 but we don't care really because white is yeah what is white finally it's an abstract concept. In OpenXR the idea is finally to say we don't care so much about the 1.0 or whatever value we have there we measure everything in floating point numbers anyway and so the gray card that we normally use on set is exactly what we want to measure this is a stable datum and just to clear that point the gray card has 18 percent reflectance which is in gamma producing systems most of the time created as 50 percent and that is exactly how we perceive a middle gray when we have white and black then the 50 percent gray is exactly in the middle from our perception but in terms of light it's only 18 percent hmm sounds weird the idea that i have shown you when we talked about the linear light file the logarithmic file that it goes double and double and double means exactly that we have our main point here in the middle and then it goes really fast up and it goes slowly down and maybe there is exactly the reason one teacher of mine told me in 2005 our history is more that we have to look into a forest or into the landscape we don't have so much enemies where the sun is so we are not really focused on super bright values we have our attention more where the danger is if that is a true story i can't really tell but the truth is our eyes work in that way and so i wouldn't bother to go deeper into that what i wanted to tell here was that in the white paper of OpenEXR the 50% gray or the 18% reflectance card the 18% gray card is exactly then 0.18 this is pretty 
important because it gives also a starting point how far the values go then from this point to the maximum where we have a precision in 16-bit floating point per channel. And this is normally called the half float. And half is here only an expression of the precision. 32-bit, for example, is the one or the one precision. And then we have double precision, which is 64-bit. But it is not used in image work. 32-bit is the maximum standard that we normally use to describe pretty much anything that we need in terms of compositing. To save again a little bit storage space, we use the half float. And what does half float mean here? When we take a look into the 16-bit half float point technical description paper, then we can see here on page 12 what's in the numbers. <laughs> and of course, you can read this at home because it's on the OpenEXR website. And you can see here also the 18% Cray value or 0.18 is the floating point measurement practically. So one step above is then 0.36. Another stop is then 72.72. .72. And the value of 1.0 has no special significance. So that's exactly what I have told you before. And I wanted to give you, of course, the source. And the idea of the 16-bit float is, of course, that the range normalized gives you 1024 steps per stop. And we have then over the Cray value 18 and a half stop over the middle Cray. This is quite something. And 11 and a half below, that's below the 15%, uh, the 50% Cray, 11 and a half stop for just this small area. Okay, so back to the explanation, and I try to make it easier than the technical stuff. The 16 bits here are separated into one for the sign which is, to my understanding, plus or minus. And plus or minus is not something that we need in our day-by-day -day life, but when we have a Sinion file and we want to convert this into floating point, then we have maybe values in it that are below our black point. They are really dark, the super blacks, and we move them into the negative area. And when we are done with all our <laughs> damage to the file, we can move them up again and then they are not lost. They are not clamped or crashed, as the saying is, crashing the plaques. Okay, this is one bit. Then we have five bits as exponent. And as exponent is always the number that we have. A 1.0 in the exponent is not used. It's always a zero in front. And as it is always a zero, we don't have to express this. In this way, we have already a 6-bit exponent, but we need only 5. And then we have the floating point, and that is 10 bits. And the floating point is 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. Funny, you remember that number that I just read to you? So when we have these numbers times this numbers and then with the sign and <laughs> plus or minus, that's not so important, then we get exactly these 18.5 stops over 50% Cray. And that sounds maybe not so much, but take your camera and see how much change you get with 18 stops alone, 18 half stop if you can set it up at all. And the rule of thumb is normally that on this planet, if you exclude the direct sunlight, 20 stops is all you need. So this is over 50% and 16% float is fairly enough. But don't think you need always only 16 bit per float because we have also just information in our data when we talk about information channels like the point map information. <laughs> Talking and writing is maybe sometimes a little bit difficult. So information can go beyond these numbers. 
when we have, for example, the x and y values in point values. You see this in release 14. And of course, the larger the space is, the larger the number will get. And then 32-bit is really what you want to have. I like 32-bit per channel anyway, because the precision for 16-bit is limited, roughly set, to 30 stops. And it has then 10 stops on top of that, which are not really safe. They are a little bit critical, but it goes beyond what we normally take into our eyes, of course. So I hope that makes it a little bit more clearer that we deal with a totally different beast. And as you remember, we went from the 50% Cray or the 0.18, always a stop above. So the 1.0 that we have mapped here to this value, or the 100% of white, where the limit is in 8-bit, for example, or 16-bit integer, is not a given here at all. So we can move up and down in a very nice way. And per stop, we have 1024 steps when we normalize that. Huge difference, and I can only encourage you, use floating point formats as long as you are in the pipeline. If you deliver finally your results, you might squeeze it into an integer so your client can read it or whatever, or into Cineon files. But as long as possible, keep the things real here with floating point. I hope I made my point even with that very dry theme. And I hope you had fun with it, at least. Thanks for listening. See you in the next part.